This is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, just to show everyone that you can have internet in your caravan and you can watch any sports event or any movie or any TV series that you wish to watch. And it's all free if you know where to go. Then maybe Charlie's not the right guy for you. Agreed. You know that Charlie's the right guy for me. Okay, then maybe there's some trauma-informed avoidance going on. Oh, is there? Maybe? Fuck yeah. Okay, stop. Maybe I don't want to take advice about marriage from someone who just, you know... <gasps> Are you divorce-shaming uh, me, dude? Oh, don't fucking dare. He did dare. I should go. Yeah. I'm sorry, Gabby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't follow me! My internet system in the caravan consists of an LTE router and a signal booster. Often I'm out in the countryside and the signal is quite weak, so I use the signal booster to boost the signal. Now my internet router is quite old and I found the signal booster to be a bit bulky to carry around and install. And it's just unsuitable. So I'd recommend a more modern router. I recently installed one of these TP-Link routers for a fellow camper and I was very impressed. It's very simple to put in. You just insert the data SIM card, switch on your computer and your router and put in the password that's on the bottom of the router to connect. The signal boost of the router itself was very good and the price is affordable. If you need a signal booster, make sure that you buy an omnidirectional booster. This means that the booster will pick up the cell tower signal from any direction. A directional booster needs to be pointed at the cell tower. And of course, when you arrive in a new caravan park, which is in a new area that you've never been to, you won't have a clue where the tower is. I do use an app on my phone called Cell Mapper, which shows me where the towers are. But that's a lot of extra work to do when you get to a place. And I'd rather just put up an omnidirectional signal booster and not have to deal with finding out where the towers are. So I plan to sell my older router and the signal booster quite soon and buy the TP-Link router and an omnidirectional signal booster, which will make my life much easier. I have a data supply from Vodacom, which gives me 150 Anytime gigs plus an extra 100 gigs of Anytime data per month on a two-year contract. I believe it's called a business data contract. I'm not absolutely sure. I'm very happy with the amount of data as I stream about four hours of sport and movies and television series a day. And even if I watch everything in high definition, I don't make a dent on my data. And I've never had to buy more data. There are quite a few free sites where you can watch any soccer or rugby or motor sporting or any sporting event as well as any movies or television series that you want to watch for free. Netflix Africa is very limited and it's really not worth having. Cinemax is pretty much the same. I got tired of those two very quickly. I can't tell you where these free TV sports and movies and, and TV series uh, websites are uh, because I'd probably get into hot water. But if you just Google watch free TV series or watch free sports events, you're likely to find one or two quite easily. So I've got loads of data and I know where to find the places that I can watch free sports and free movies. You can buy data on a pay-as-you-go basis here. And I did that through Cell C for a few years, buying 50 gigs a month for 500 rand. But I didn't get good uh, internet reception through them. I was always complaining about my Celsius service and I wanted something else. So I got the Vodacom contract eventually. Now getting the Vodacom contract was quite interesting. I went into a Vodacom store in Robertson, this is about three years ago, and tried to sign up for this lovely loads of, you know, 100 gigs, 100 and what is it, 150 gigs a month plus another 100 at 299 and I uh, filled in all the paperwork and the lady came back and said, no, I'm sorry, you ha don't have any debt, um, so we can't give you a contract. Now, I thought to myself, well, if I don't have any debt, I've got some money, so it should be okay. You know, you should be very happy to give me a contract, but life doesn't work like that. My parents used to say, the world has gone crazy. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing these days. Anyway, I said to the lady, look, 
I'll pay for the whole thing in the two year uh, amount in advance. I'll give you the 7,500, whatever it was, rand now. And, you know, then it's paid up in front. And then you don't have to worry that I'm going to abscond as a bad debt or something. Uh, so she said, well, I, I need to go and use the phone. So she went off for a few minutes, came back and said, no, my boss has told me that we can't do that. And once again, the thought of the world has gone crazy came back into my mind. But that was it. I just couldn't take out the contract. And that's just the way it works. Internet service in the countryside depends on how close you are to an internet tower, and these are normally near the towns. In the more remote areas, there's nothing. If you're within 20 kilometers from a town, you'll generally get a signal and be able to watch what you want. Most caravan parks don't supply internet to their customers. Often they'll have internet available at their office and they'll tell you that you can use this for free. But if you want to watch the Springboks play in the All Blacks at 6 o'clock in the evening, the office is closed and most of the time the internet's switched off. A few times I've sat outside a closed caravan park office in the dark at 6 o'clock in the evening trying to get a signal, desperate to watch the rugby in two or three layers of clothes because rugby is played in winter and it's freezing. And I'm only able to catch two or three seconds of play before the picture freezes and the little wheel appears on the screen doing its slow turn like a slap in the face. Anyway, there is a new satellite system called Starlink which will be available in South Africa soon. I think it might already be available. Um, it's already available in most of the first world countries in Europe and America. So if you want to get some more information on that you can Google Starlink and there's plenty of them. It's an absolutely amazing system that they've put in. But it seems that it's going to be expensive around 1,700 rand a month, which is six times more than I'm paying now, six times more. So it looks as though I'll be doing the African thing, which is watch when you can. And if the electricity is not on or the internet doesn't work, watch the replay the next day when it's all working again. In fact, as I write this, I'm just about to watch a Manchester City game that was played last night, and I'm really looking forward to this. I hope this has helped you. You can get lots of pleasure uh, using the internet. Uh, YouTube alone is, is just fascinating and being able to watch sports sitting in the caravan either on a Saturday afternoon or a weekday evening and to watch movies and you know things that are happening live makes this sort of life traveling around and living in my caravan much more pleasurable for me. Mm -hmm.